Environmental justice must be obtained in order to halt the effects of climate change and protect the existence of our planet. What is climate change? Climate change is a current epidemic that is continuing to hinder our environment. It refers to the shift in usual weather patterns found in a particular place. Climate depends on certain seasons of the year, including summer, winter, spring, and fall, or can depend on the location. Throughout Earth's history, our climate has always been changing. However, within the past few decades, our global temperatures have been increasing at alarming rates. In most places in the world, we are seeing a 1 to 2 degree Celsius increase in temperatures from 50 years ago. This being said, we are rapidly increasing our average temperature by 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade. Human interactions with the environment have only created worse issues and has led to the increase of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, causing global warming. Fossil burning fuels from animal agriculture to industrial businesses are released into the air and trapped in the atmosphere, creating heat from the sun that would escape into space. One of the causes of climate change is burning fossil fuels. According to National Geographic, non-renewable fuels, which include coal, oil, and natural gas, supply about 80% of the world's energy. We use these fuels in our everyday lives, from driving to work to providing heat within our homes. However, these resources negatively impact our environment by releasing large amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Individuals in minority communities surrounding these industries are negatively affected. As shown in the graph from U.S. Energy Information Administration, greenhouse gas emissions in California have been at the highest rates they have ever been before. Although emissions in California have decreased, we still have far more work to do in order to reverse the harm we have caused on our environment. With the development of large businesses and companies such as Chevron and ExxonMobil, they lead the world as top polluters of fossil fuels. With the extracting, refining, and delivering of these fuels, the corporations are putting the planet in danger for the benefit of their own profit. Companies who release large amounts of greenhouse gases should pay reparations and minimize their carbon footprint to help fight against climate change and protect the people's health. As ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle mentions in Book 5 of the Nicomachean Ethics, pursuing something for your own gains and interest, disregarding others, is unlawful and unjust. Another main cause of climate change is animal agriculture. Factory farms cause many harmful effects to our environment, from water and air pollution to deforestation. In order to support millions of grazing cattle to only get sent to slaughterhouses, forests are being destroyed to make room for livestock. As a cause of this, we continue to lose carbon from trees, continuing the ongoing cycle of global warming and the greenhouse gas effect. Not only does animal agriculture cause deforestation, but it also results in the emissions of methane and pollution in nearby communities. In the state of California alone, over 300 million kilograms of nitrogen and 56 million kilograms of phosphorus was produced in the year 2007. Livestock methane emissions have increased by 51% since 1961. The animal waste is usually untreated and left to discharge in nearby rivers or landfills, damaging the health of nearby community members. Deforestation is detrimental to our environment. Trees take in carbon dioxide and in return produce oxygen, which allows humans to breathe. However, when trees are cut down for resources, animal agriculture, and urbanization, their stored carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere, then contributing to the greenhouse gas effect and global warming. More than 162 million trees in California have died as a result of climate change. California's forests provide hundreds of thousands of jobs for individuals, and without them, people and their families will be negatively affected. As a society, we must change the way we exploit wood, 
destroying the habitats and homes of many species. The animal agriculture industry is the largest contributor to the issue of deforestation in order to allow livestock to graze and consume crops. Our largest tropical forest, the Amazon, and a large supplier of oxygen is being threatened by the increase of beef production as well as soybean production. About 70% of all soy becomes livestock feed, therefore animal agriculture being the number one reason for deforestation, which many people are unaware of. Within the past four years of President Trump's time in the White House, he has rolled back 125 environmental safeguards. This outrageous number has only created more issues with our current climate problem. From easing restrictions for power plants that leak waste in our communities, to recently opening up Alaska's national rainforest for lodging, Trump has contributed to our planet's climate change. He claims the phrase, Trump digs coal, referring to providing jobs for people in the coal industry. He does not take into consideration the harm of the environment and instead promotes a non-renewable energy source, adding to our global warming crisis. This is an unlawful manner and unjust to the individuals directly affected by climate change. The Trump administration has successfully rolled back many environmental policies and continues to fight for fewer restrictions. A crucial effect on our environment due to the rise in global temperatures is the increase of wildfires and desertification in communities. Climate change has influenced the soil moisture and presence of shrubs, creating a drier environment more prone to wildfires. Over the past 40 years, wildfires in western U.S. have more than doubled as a result of warmer conditions and longer drought seasons. According to the Center for Climate and Energy Solutions, an average annual 1 degree Celsius temperature increase would increase the median burned area per year as much as 600% in some types of forests. Our forests are being destroyed by these deadly wildfires and they are putting people at risk from firefighters to homeowners. As of November 2020, California has witnessed a record-breaking wildfire season with over 9,279 fires burned across 4,359,517 acres. After the destruction the past wildfire season has caused, our environment will not be able to sustain this rate for years to come. Global warming has resulted in the rise of sea levels caused by melting glaciers. Because of the increase in temperatures, the melting of glaciers in ice-based environments such as Alaska, Greenland, and Antarctica has accelerated since the early 1900s. According to the World Wildlife Fund, when it comes to sea ice, 95% of the oldest and thickest ice in the Arctic is already gone. The article states that the Arctic can be free of ice by the year 2040 if we continue at our current temperatures and greenhouse gas emissions. As a result of large ice glaciers melting, sea levels then rise, disrupting coastal communities throughout the world. The lives of innocent citizens are being threatened. In Venice, Italy, they have been dealing with the threat of rising sea levels over the past 50 years. Between the years 2014 and 2018, there were 34 instances of high water risings in Venice, whereas between 1875 through 1951, there were only 30 instances. The city and its citizens are at major risk of constant sea level rising, and if our rising global temperatures are not addressed, Venice will be underwater by the year 2100. One of the most important effects of climate change is the threat to people's health. Determined by age, social class, and location, individuals are affected in different ways. However, low-income people of color are affected the most. Air pollution created by industries and animal waste from factory farms create unlivable conditions for nearby citizens. Health problems have arisen from climate change, such as diminished lung function, 
increased hospital admissions and emergency room visits for the asthma and increases in premature deaths. Because of the increase in temperatures, pathogens are also exposed to our food and water, specifically untreated groundwater. Along with this, those who live in communities close to animal factory farms are threatened by serious health issues due to the methane levels from animal waste and the animal waste itself escaping into the local river streams and water supplies. In Angela Davis's essay, Race, Gender, and the Prison History, she demonstrates the ongoing cycle of racism and discrimination towards Black communities. Low-income minorities cannot afford to move away from animal agriculture farms, threatening their lives and their loved ones. Ta-Nehisi Coates, in The Case for Reparations, reinforces the discrimination of Black communities. With strict housing policies and laws enforced by the Federal Housing Administration, the government segregated people of color into certain areas of the city beginning in the early 1900s. Since then, Black communities have fought for equality and better living conditions. Climate change is a civil rights issue. When you go back and you look at where these hog facilities are located, there's a disproportionate number of them that are located near communities of color, low-income communities. It is definitely a human rights issue. My sister, she have asthma, and you know, her brother, he have asthma. He's three, and we don't know what she might have. I have asthma, I have sinus, I have sarcoidosa, that's a bacteria, and I have a pacemaker, which is sick sinus syndrome. But you know, mostly everybody in this neighborhood got asthma or either cancer. My neighbor there died from cancer probably just last year. My nephew down the street, he's got cancer. He's in terminal cancer, stage four. Not a smoker, not a drinker. And it's not in his lungs. It's in his lymph nodes. I see if you live here and saw the way they do, you don't eat no pork. Well, I don't eat bacon because I know where it comes from. Smell was so strong that I had to go back and regroup because it got in my clothes and I just couldn't go to church. Smelling like hogs, you know, I just couldn't do it. So I don't think that the government cares. They care more about cooperation than do people's individuals. We can still reverse the damage we have caused on our environment, but it must take the entire global population to make an effort to change. The most beneficial way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, halt the increase in temperatures, and restore ecosystems back to normal is by adopting a plant-based diet. Not only does a plant-based diet offer plenty of health benefits, but it reduces the practice of animal agriculture and the demand for livestock, one of the major contributors to climate change. We would minimize the agricultural land use and prevent further deforestation and issues factory farms and animal agriculture brings. According to PETA, an Oxford University study shows that meat eaters emit 99 to 102% higher greenhouse gas emissions than those who follow a plant-based diet. If more people throughout the world adopt a plant-based diet, we can help fight global warming and reduce our carbon footprint tremendously. Renewable energy sources also allows us to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions and fight climate change. These sources would replace fossil fuels and non-renewable energy, hindering our environment and releasing deadly chemicals into our atmosphere. In addition to climate benefits, renewable energy will increase public health and overall reduce expensive costs needed to pay for fossil fuels. Type of renewable energy include wind energy, solar energy, and hydropower energy. Many nations are looking to shift their use of energy to more sustainable practices, reducing their greenhouse gas emissions extremely. A country that is a great example of this is Iceland. In Iceland, the electricity consumed by the population is almost 100% renewable energy, according to the United Nations. They use natural resources such as water from melting glaciers, along with the active volcanic zones, which power geothermal systems. By using natural resources, they are able to cut their carbon footprint and have a positive impact on the climate change crisis. As a society, we must continue to fight and protest for
for environmental justice.